I got a bit too Marvel heavy and I try to balance it between Marvel and DC. So I'm trying to compensate with a little bit more DC now. This is Justice League 171. All them years ago, like at most a year ago. You may remember I did a vote for what story you wanted us to review. And it was between four of the original DC Christmas on Two Earths events. And this was an option. It didn't win. I think it even got the least amount of votes. But here we have it. Quick bit of history is that the Justice League comic every year they would do a crossover with the Justice Society of Superheroes characters. It was like a big thing. And a lot of them stories, they're, they're a bit rubbish. They're always trying to like one-up the last one. Like one year they'll bring in Captain Marbles, the real one, Biffy Baston. And then for the next one, they try to top that by bringing in all the tiny titans. Or they would send the teams back in time or to another world. But this one here, uh, I can't even remember what it is formally called. But I think this one was notable as the one that was truly trying to do something fresh. And do a unique Christmas on Two Earths event. Uh, this one, it isn't just bringing the characters together to have them do a routine team up adventure story. Instead, this one is a murder mystery. Uh, the ultimate reveal is a complete arse pull, but I commend it for trying something different. So we've got both the teams, they gather together, they're having a party. On Watching Tower, uh, that is the Justice League satellite base, and we've got we've got loads of nice little character bits like here. We've got Stephen Hawkman and Satana, and then we're reintroduced to Mister Terrificals, uh, the original and rubbish version of Mister Terrificals, and I love saying that because it's a rare case where. A race-swapped hero is exponentially superior to the original version. Mr. Terrificals, the rubbish white man version, he is the murder victim for this story. And here we are getting some backstory and exposition about how he came out of retirement because one of his ad villains showed up. And he storms off angry because the other heroes... Suggest that he should just stay retired and let them deal with it. Uh, then we've got a great little sequence with Batman and Mockingbird, uh, Chelsea Kane. Uh, this is the version that is Batman's daughter. This is this is Chelsea Wayne. Uh, lovely little scene though. Then we've got some more downtime bits. Like we've got Stephen Hawkman and Doctor Fates talking about archaeology. Then we got the two Green Lanterns, uh, the John Scott version and the Jordan Albert version. Uh, we got an advert there, Jokers, he's selling fruit pies. That's like his most insane plan yet. Then the satellite that I'm just going to call a ship from now on. It starts to hit some like space turbulence. And there's a big explosion and all the heroes, they're worried and they rush off to save the day. Uh, this story was referred to quite heavily in that issue of the Spectre I reviewed. The one that introduced the new, diverse, better version of Mr. Terrificals. And I purposely tried to avoid giving away who commits the murder, even though the reveal is really shit. So they go off into space and they find Mr. Terrificals' dead body floating on a bit of debris from the ship. Uh, and there's and there's two Stephen Hawkmans in this story because, well, one Stephen Hawkman isn't confusing enough. So Doctor Fates and Superman they go out and they try to fix the ship and make sure that now bad happens with like a bit of the ship falling down to earth and stuff. Then the two Stephen Hawkmans and the two Green Lanterns they repair the ship and plug up the all. But the rubbish white man, Mr. Terrificals, is dead. 
and they don't quite know what has happened. Then some of the more detective-y characters like The Flask, Barney Allen and Mockingbird, Chelsea Wayne, they start to try and work out what happened and then Satana, she uses her magic to try and just tell her what caused all this. And she ends up in a blooming coma for the sake of plot convenience. So the two flasks, they run all around the ship to try and see if there's an intruder anyway. But they can't find anyone. And then they realise that Mr. Terrificals, the white man version, he was actually strangled to death. And blown up the ship so he would be jettisoned into space. It was to cover up the murder. And worse, because nobody else is on the ship and the computer systems didn't detect anyone else, it must be one of the heroes who is the murderer. I haven't pointed out any of the red errands or potential clues because, well, it's a load of bollocks. But uh, Supergirl, Supergirl and Division, they are the two that seem to be framed as the main suspects here. It's to be continued. It's... It's not a great story when it all comes together in the next part, but there's nothing really wrong with this issue beyond setting up for disappointment. There's some nice interactions between the heroes and there's two Stephen Hawkmans and it did at least come at these annual crossover stories with a new idea. I rate it seven thumbs up.